What's happening my curious bunch of health fanatics? Welcome back to the channel. In this video, we embark on a fascinating journey into the realm of aging itself. We ask the big question, is aging reversible? Will it ever be reversible? Does life have an upper limit? And what tech would be required for the upper limit? And how far off could this technology be? I'll explain all facets of this as best I can in this short video. But first, a quick message to the Google moderators. We are not selling any product or service. We are simply sharing health science news. So let's dive in. To understand the possibility of reversing aging, we must first grasp the science behind it. Our cells have a limited ability to divide and as time goes on, they accumulate damage. I want you to think of cells as protein factories. For example, cells make up to 28 types of collagen. What do you think happens to your skin when your protein factories, aka your cells, are disappearing and can no longer make collagen? Well, the skin is going to age, of course. Scientists have made significant strides in understanding these processes and new techniques are being uncovered regularly to restore function inside cells. One exciting area of research involved telomeres, the protective caps at the ends of our chromosomes. Every time a cell divides to make new cells, the telomeres shorten until they can no longer protect the DNA. This prevents cells from dividing into more cells, so think of telomeres as cellular fuses. However, in the lab, scientists have found ways to extend telomeres and promote cellular division, which creates more protein factories, aka cells. Which, can, which means we can already ensure cells can divide forever, meaning we would never run out of cells. Imagine a future where we can rejuvenate our cells by lengthening our telomeres, effectively keeping more cells around to produce the rejuvenation proteins that are required for youthful tissue function. Many techniques are now coming into the fray with cellular reprogramming, which can make cells function as if they were much younger, this was discovered by Shinzo Yamanaka, who won the Nobel Prize for his work in 2012. My company is spearheading a technology called tissue reprogramming, and I'll make a video on the differences between cellular reprogramming and tissue reprogramming in due course. As both of these therapies will be required to turn back age, especially in older human beings. Of course, advanced stem cell therapies might become a reality, allowing us to replace damaged cells with fresh, youthful ones, essentially turning back the clock on aged, worn out joints and other areas of the body. And finally, gene editing may become widely acceptable as we are really just computer code or genetic code, which is simply a complex sequence of amino acids. Editing that code can change the proteins our cells make or can completely remove or restore various proteins in old age. For example, there is a gene we all have that makes telomeres longer. This gene is called telomerase. So imagine inserting or knocking in another telomerase gene into humans so that the body can release more telomerase to extend telomeres so your protein factories or your cells can hang around for much longer. This is not science fiction either. This is already happening in the longevity circles that I work in, with the first person having this type of therapy back in 2015. The above technologies are what I refer to as tier three technologies, and you can read my paper called Three Tiers to Biological Escape Velocity in the details below. While the potential for reversing aging with future technology is thrilling, it also raises important ethical questions. How do we define the natural course of life? What are the implications of extending human lifespans? Could there be an overpopulation problem or are we already on a population collapse trajectory? But know this, we have now reached a point where there are more people alive over the age of 65 than under five. And if we don't find a way to keep older people healthy and vibrant, the cost for the upcoming generation would be unsustainable. So these longevity therapies have to happen. Feel free to put your thoughts in the comments below. In conclusion, the idea of reversing aging is not just the stuff of science fiction, it's already happening. Significant strides have been made in understanding the aging process and with the right advancements, we might be able to slow down or even reverse aging itself one day. So far, no one has reversed aging. 
Aging is a slow creep of biological decay and even though some people can be exceptionally fit and healthy and hang on to very youthful biomarkers, their tissues will still age. So be careful of clickbait you see online of people making claims of age reversal. The only thing currently reversible are biomarkers of various tissue function, which comes from a good diet and training, but that is not the same as age reversal. The very act of being alive causes minute damage to tissues as well. So until we can repair tissues faster than damage, the damage happens, we are aging. But once we can repair those tissues faster than the aging process, we have reached what I call biological escape velocity. And it's closer than you think. One more question, does life have an upper limit? Well, if you can repair and rejuvenate human tissues, which is all the major organs faster than aging can damage them, then maybe not, but only time will tell. But we won't know that answer for at least another 150 years. And at which point the technologies to keep people around will dwarf any technology we'll have in the next few decades. Always chat with your doctor about health data you see online. Don't forget to grab a copy of my book, The Anti-Aging Toolkit, second edition out now. Hit that thumbs up button, fist bump the subscribe button, or face the consequences of your actions. Visit me at www.scienceofaging.life and as always, stay young and stay vibrant.